In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel pump assembly on this Kia Forte Coupe. This will be located beneath your rear seat. Let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is release fuel pressure from inside the fuel system. The easiest way to do that is from behind this fuse cover right here. To remove the fuse cover, you're going to find that you have two locking tabs, one here and one on the opposite side. We'll lift this up and out of place. Underneath that cover, you're going to find a legend, and we're looking for the fuel pump fuse. It's a 15 amp. We'll use this legend and remove that fuse. Looking in this area, I found my 15 amp fuse. It's the end of the line right here. We'll pull that out of place. A quick inspection, make sure it is still reusable. If it looks like it's damaged in any way, it's a good idea to replace it. This looks fine, temporarily set it aside. The next thing we need to do is attempt to start the engine. What you're going to find is as you're cranking over the vehicle, it may start and then die out. Otherwise, it may just keep cranking and not start at all. Either way, that means we have no fuel pressure making its way up inside the fuel rail, and at that point, we can continue. We'll leave our fuse dislodged and continue on inside the rear of the passenger compartment. Now, along the back seat of the passenger compartment, we're going to have to remove the lower portion here. To be able to remove this, if you were to look along each side of the rear seat, you're going to find a 12 millimeter headed mounting bolt. To gain access to that, you need to make your way in between this groove, gently separate it enough that you can reach inside to remove the mounting bolts. With the rear dislodged, we're going to take hold along the front of the rear seat. What we need to do on each side is to give it a light tug straight upward to break it free. With both sides popped free, we'll continue on with pulling this out of place, paying attention to each one of our seat belt buckles along the back side there. Remove your rear seat from the vehicle. With the seat out of the way, we'll be paying attention directly in the center of this area of the body of the vehicle. We need to remove this plate, but keep in mind, it does have a wiring harness that leads down and under it. With that said, we'll have to carefully start prying it out of place. You can use a small screwdriver or even a trim tool if necessary. We wanna be careful not to cause any damage because we are going to be reusing this plate. Once you're under this area, it's time to start disconnecting the electrical connectors. There's two of them. One right here. To disconnect this, you want to press in on the locking tab directly along the top and slide it out of place. Once you have it disconnected, a quick inspection for corrosion and set that aside. Continue on doing the same thing to the next one. Locking tabs along the top on the second one as well. Easy to see and easy to remove. Set this aside. With that out of the way, the next thing you need to do is go ahead and clean up the top of the tank here. We don't want any miscellaneous debris falling inside while we continue. We'll use some compressed air for this. Now with that area clean, we need to make sure we're in a well-ventilated area because we're going to start opening up the fuel system. There's going to be vapors and we want to be as safe as possible. This fuel line that you can see with the green tab connector here, that you can just push right out of the way. We don't need to deal with that. Continuing from there, we have our next fuel line that comes up along this area. For this, you're going to find it has an orange locking tab that covers up the tabs that we're going to have to squeeze to be able to remove this. We'll carefully pry this out of place. We don't want to break it because we are reusing it. A quick inspection of that locking tab. Like I said, we are reusing it. Just inspect it and set it aside. 
to disconnect your fuel line, as I mentioned, there's locking tabs. You can see one along this side here, and there's the same thing on the opposite side. Squeeze them in and disconnect this, but keep in mind there could still be fuel in the system. Be extremely careful. If you have a hard time squeezing with your fingers, you could also use pliers if necessary. We'll just squeeze those in and draw this towards the front of the vehicle. A quick inspection of that line and you can set it aside temporarily. Continuing from here, our vehicle has a rubber protective boot making its way along this area. We're going to remove that. To do that, you can use pretty much anything to pry it out of place. I'm just going to use a flat blade screwdriver. A quick inspection set it aside. Once again, we are reusing this as well. Continuing from here, we need to remove the lock ring that goes all the way around this, holding the fuel pump assembly down inside the fuel tank. It's a good idea to use a little bit of lubricant in this area, making its way around to help this lock ring make its way off counterclockwise. Just add a little bit here. To remove the lock ring, you could use a specialty tool, or if you had some small punches, we're going to make our way inside of the small holes here. The holes make their way all the way around, so you can really pick whichever ones you want, but essentially you wanna have them straight across from each other. We'll hold them, making a triangle like I am here, and now we'll have to continue on with a pry bar. The pry bar is going to go in between these, and that's what we're going to use for leverage to be able to spin this counterclockwise to remove it. Thoroughly inspect your lock ring. If it looks like it's rotted or damaged, you need to go ahead and replace this. This one looks fine. We'll set it aside. At this point, we're going to have to have a collection receptacle because we want to lift this up and out of the fuel tank. But keep in mind, it's sitting in the fuel that's inside the fuel tank. We don't want to get any of that on any of the carpeting inside the passenger compartment. We'll take hold of that fuel pump assembly and we can lift it up and out of here. As you can tell, there is still fuel inside of it. Let's be extremely careful with this. It's flammable. Put that right inside the collection receptacle. Before we can reinstall our fuel pump assembly into the fuel tank, you wanna go ahead and remove the gasket. We'll continue on with a clean rag, make our way around this area where our seal will go. Now it's time to install our gasket. We'll take this and rest it right in the proper positioning. Just slide it right on in there. Make sure it's completely seated. You don't want to get caught on anything with this. Now it's time to install the fuel pump assembly. When installing this, you want to have it in the proper orientation so you have your fuel level sensor facing towards the driver's side of the vehicle and the float is facing towards the rear. We'll start putting this in position by taking that float, sliding it in first, and now we can roll the rest of it down into the proper position. At this point, we need to confirm that we have our fuel line facing towards the front of the vehicle so we can reattach the fuel line once everything's said and done here. Now we'll continue on with our locking ring while pressing down on the fuel pump assembly with it in the proper position. We'll take this ring, get it in position, and start it on by hand. We'll continue on with our two punches and our pry bar again, or if you have the specialty tool, you can go ahead and use that, of course. We'll turn this as far as we can until it's completely bottomed out. That's as tight as it's going to go. We'll double check to make sure this is properly secured. If you can lift up and down on this, it's not secured and you could potentially get fuel vapors up inside your passenger compartment. We've confirmed everything's nice and tight. Let's put on our protective rubber cover here. This just slides right on over that locking ring. With that in place, we'll continue on with our fuel line. We'll bring that right on over. For the fuel line, you want to take this and get it in position on this area of the fuel pump assembly. We'll press it in, listen for a click, and we'll give it a tug to make sure it's secured properly. There was an audible click, we'll give it a tug. At this point, it should be able to move back and forth a tiny bit, but it should not be able to slide off. If it can slide off, there's an issue and you need to take care of it, otherwise you're going to have a fuel leak. Once you do have that pressed in and you've confirmed it's properly secured, we'll continue on with our orange locking tab here. 
For this, we're going to come in at an angle and we'll slide it down into the position by squeezing out on those tabs. It should wrap around and lock into the proper position. Now we'll just triple check this. We're going to give it a little tug again, making sure that it's properly secured. Continue on with your electrical wiring harnesses here. We'll take this one, press it in, listen for a click. A little tug, make sure it's secured. Same process for the other one. Reinstall your protective cover. We'll get this in the proper positioning. Press it down as hard as possible here. Make sure it's stuck down. If it does not stick down, you could potentially get moisture or debris up inside your passenger compartment. If you have to reseal it, lift it back up, make a nice bead all the way around. Now it's time for the rear seat. As we start bringing this in, there's several things that we're going to pay attention to. First of all, and the most important, your seatbelt buckles. You always need to have access to those, so you want to make sure you have them in the upright position and they will make their way through the slots that are in the back seat. You're going to have three of those buckles. Two on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. Now aside from that, when we were taking this apart, I mentioned that there was mounting bolts that held this in place. Looking at the body of the vehicle, you can see one of the ports right here, and on the other side, it's in pretty much the exact same area. We'll lift up on those buckles. Make sure they're not twisted. One, two, three. Press this back as far as possible and now we'll press down on the front, locking it in and we'll continue on with our two mounting bolts, holding it in place along the back side. Installing the mounting bolts, it's easiest if you just put it right onto your 12 millimeter socket with an extension and we'll carefully make our way inside this area. Find our mounting bolt hole there. I'm just gonna use a bigger ratchet here, make sure it's nice and tight. Make your way back up under the hood. Back to the fuse box, it's time to resecure our 15 amp fuse in the original position. To do this, we'll just take it, align it, and press it straight on down and in. Double check to make sure everything's still secured in place as far as the fuse box is concerned, and we'll reinstall the cover. Press it down, make sure it's completely secured so no moisture or debris makes its way inside your fuse box. Okay friend, we finished our installation. The next thing you need to do is attempt to start up the vehicle. What you may find is a long crank scenario. What I mean by that is it's going to crank a couple times before it actually starts up. And that's due to the fact we have to build up fuel pressure all the way up to the fuel rail across the front of the engine. Once you have pressure there, the engine's going to fire up and continue running. After that, make sure you have no fuel leaks, no check engine light, no running condition, and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.